All right, it's time to tackle something that I knew I was gonna have to work on eventually, and that's putting a new GPS in this bay liner. So it's been kind of disappointing. I don't think a lot of people put GPSs in these smaller uh, bow riders because I'm not finding any information whatsoever for videos, literature, or anything. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and flip the camera around and I'll show you what kind of GPS I got and where I think I'm gonna go ahead and put it. All right, I decided to go on eBay and buy another one of the same GPSs that I have and the other boat here that I'm trying to sell. Uh, it's a Hummingbird 597 CI HD. Um, and of course it has the maps built into it. It's what I really like. Well, it's not built into it, but it's in a memory card right behind that slot there. So um, I, I just, I've grown to really like the ease of use for, of this. Um, and the, the main feature, of course, is the maps that uh, when you get in the river, it really helps show you where the, the channels are, where your deeper water is. So I really like that. Obviously, I've got the, the depth finder built in here, but uh, the maps on here really show you, you know, how far you are from being in or out of the channel, which I, I like a lot. So if you look on the dash here, that boat over there, is the units like right here. So as you can imagine, that's not very optimal because it blocks the speedometer halfway, uh, completely blocks the, the tachometer and also the trim up and down, which is no good. I can't do that. So I got to look in here and I, I thought, you know, well, I wonder if this would fit in where this cup holder is. So if you set the unit right here, if I can get it to sit up on its own here, let's see. It might be tilted back all the way, but anyway, um, that's like a perfect fit, basically. You know, you can still see all the other gauges. Uh, it's in great view when you're moving. Um, it's not in the way of anything, and the only thing I'm going to lose at this point is a cup holder, but I have that cup holder, and then, of course, I have the two uh, in the back there by the motor and in my, my other boat, I've got, uh, somebody had attached like a stainless steel one, uh, right here. It's like this one that comes with like a 3M backing and it just sticks. And I guess, uh, the only thing I would lose would be these warning stickers here. I'm not sure if I could reorder those and just put them right here just for the, f the sake of having them there. But, um, I kind of like this scenario. So, uh, the only problem was, is the bracket that's on the bottom here, as you can see there, the holes, if the holes, if this was a square piece, I could almost make it work. And I probably could have just drilled the holes like here, 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 and here. But because it tapers in the back, the, there's no way to attach in the back here. So my game plan, I have quite a bit of uh, the, uh, marine plywood left from where I fixed the floor in this boat. So what I'm thinking is I'm just gonna take this completely out and then basically measure this hole and then make a round piece of marine plywood that, that will get me up at least to where the side of the, the wall is here. I can't make it any bigger, obviously, but I only need to make it about a half to three inch inches quarter uh, bigger than the hole is currently here and then also make a matching one for the bottom and then just find a convenient way to attach the two to kind of clamp it together. So I basically fill this hole with, with the template that I'm gonna cut out. And then all I have to do at that point is just drill a hole big enough through the middle uh, for, to run the power wire and the transducer wire. And then um, I'm set. And then I, there, that template that I cut out, the round template that I cover this hole with should be plenty big enough, obviously, to screw all four screws in and then it, it it doesn't damage the boat i don't drill any holes in the actual uh, boat itself and i can easily take it off and put the cup holder back in at any time so um, that's what i'm going to go ahead and do and that's what i'm going to work on this afternoon uh so uh let me go ahead and get started on getting the wood cut out and we'll we'll kind of see where she goes from there all right just a quick update there's the top piece that's cut and then Here's the one for the bottom. That one will go perfectly underneath of it. And now I just gotta dig through my bag of hardware, see if I have something like just a, 
a small fine threaded screw with a couple of decent sized washers and we'll cinch you down. All right, there's the first mock-up. Um, all I have now is I have, uh, I'm not gonna use a flathead. This is just temporary. Was, that was the only thing I had to could go through both pieces, pieces of wood and the, the boat hole uh, for the, uh, the cup holder hole there. So um, I will at some point go back and get something with a head on it because I'm not real big into using these flatheads for anything, um, especially once I cinch it down. So obviously want to make sure whatever I buy is also stainless steel, but that's in place right now, just hand tight. Uh, and so this is uh, kind of like a, basically the mock-up there. So what I'm going to do now is basically just put some marks maybe on the both sides and in the front to, to let me know where exactly I want this base to stay. And at that point, I'll take this off and pull the the actual unit off of the, the base itself. And that way I can use something to mark the holes. And uh, that way I can go ahead and uh, screw the base down and uh, or at least have the holes in place for the base. Um, obviously at some point here soon, I'm gonna get some marine paint and uh, try to see if I can match this up best I can. Um, I mean, this looks like it's basically a basic white in here, but uh, maybe a, a, a slight shade lesser than white white I guess so we'll try to match it up best we can but uh definitely going to paint this just to protect it so that's where we're at right now all right we've got the top piece just kind of sitting in place here with the two cables pulled through here and uh, we're almost ready I've got I've just got one screw in the front and then one on the opposite side in the rear because I don't know if these are stainless steel screws and I, I'm just using what I have in the garage today uh, sometime this weekend, I'll go and buy some stainless steel screws just to make sure. Uh, also, the same one that I'm running through to attach the two pieces of wood together. I'm also going to make sure I buy that in stainless steel just, just for that extra longevity. So, the one thing I wanted to show you first, though, was just make sure that you're running those two through the bottom piece as well. Because, obviously, you're going to have to pull that up now, or I will, and uh, attach the washer and the nut on the back here. And then uh, at that point, we'll be ready to slide the unit on. Um, so I'll go ahead and do that and I'll be right back. Well, the good news is I had a little bit of this Rust-Oleum topside paint, which is uh, what I used on the floor. And it's just a standard white, but I didn't have a ton left, but uh, this is what I put on the finished product of the boat floor once I, uh, put the fiberglass and everything in place. Uh, I painted this on top of it. So um, stuff seems like it covers pretty good. So I've just put a coat on for now. That's the bottom one, that's the top one. And uh, just for guys like me, I'm not, I'm terrible at woodworking. I don't have a lot of woodworking tools. You can see the hole that I made for each one is kind of butchered. But the cool thing is that one's gonna be on the bottom out of sight. And this one's gonna be covered up like oh, an overwhelming amount of this plate's gonna be covered up by the base of the GPS. So if you're like me and you're terrible at woodwork, don't worry about it because you're not going to see any of that imperfection. Uh, you're just going to basically see the base sitting on top. So I'll let that uh, dry for a bit and probably put a second coat on. And then uh, I think I'm going to head to the hardware store and grab those uh, screws and the, uh, the one screw that holds the two together if I can find them in stainless steel. So I guess we'll let this dry for the time being. All right. We're at the point now where we're ready to go ahead and put this together. Here's the uh, the top here. I've already mounted the base on. And here's the bottom. I, I painted both sides. I just did a second coat on the visible side. So this will be underneath the, the dash like that. And that'll be the bottom. And then, of course, uh, this is the visible side on this one. I got two coats and it just got a single coat. So um, there's the brand new hardware in there with the uh, washer. Um, this is quarter inch. So um, that's just that happened to be the, the, the hole that I drilled was perfect for that. Um, and these heads on the nut and the bolt are both 7 16 So from the top, I'm using a quarter inch drive with an extension and a, the screwdriver end because this, uh, you can see how tight that is. It's going to be to, to get on that. So that was the smallest thing I had. And it just barely gets in there and grabs a hold of it. And then from the bottom, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten it this way. I did get a shorter uh, bolt. Uh, the one I was using out of the garage yesterday was 
a lot longer than it needed to be so i just got one i think that's two inches total and between uh going through the washers and both pieces of quarter inch plywood actually it's half inch plywood sorry um and then going through the dash uh it should be very little hanging out the bottom the only thing i wanted to really get what were uh, was a locking washer unfortunately the tractor supply that i went to was sold out so i just got the standard nut here so uh this is what we got and uh i guess we'll see uh the only thing i would add is <clears throat> i may at some point here soon come back if i have enough uh, i think i'll have enough room on that that bolt uh i'd like to put something uh in between uh the dash and the piece of wood just so it doesn't really scuff into the the uh the gel coat maybe uh just a thin layer of felt or something like that just so as i when i sandwich them together it doesn't scratch into the gel coat too bad but um the good news is we're going out tomorrow so this will get its first road test pretty quickly so we'll see how it handles the trip tomorrow so but other than that that's about the only thing i will probably change once i install it but because this comes on and off so quickly um i can do that pretty much at any time so let's go ahead and get started all right there's the finished product it's very sturdy it's like the base itself isn't moving at all this is just what a little play is in the between the unit and the base they came with but you can see forgot to mention that i did get stainless steel screws all the way in four corners so it's cinched down really well it actually blends in with the dash very well it's obviously a lighter shade of white but um overall i'm not really worried about that at all and i'll take you underneath here real quick um hopefully you can see it see how the, the wires go underneath there and uh i just have to get these zip tied over and out of the way but uh i don't have the uh, transducer actually hooked up that's why it's saying roughly 1200 feet because it's just aiming every which way but um i'm not really using it for the the depth because i do have a depth finder right here on the dash i'm really just using it for plotting um and uh i've already got waypoints in here from where we've been out on this river before so it's going to be perfect so really really pleased with this i guess we're going to get the first trip in it tomorrow and that's where i'll wrap up the video and we'll see how she does in action all right well we made it on the water today and it's held up really well uh no really play in it at all and uh as you can see we're just out here and about 30 feet of water and uh, caught some fish so far, but I would say this is turning out to be better than expected. So the next trick, of course, is gonna try to figure out how to get this transponder attached. We were thinking we might try something temporary. Today, we just got it hanging over the, the side of the boat. Um, that's why it's fairly accurate, because here's the, uh, the depth finder. I don't know if you can see that. That's saying around 30, and this one depends on the way the boat tips. It's saying about 32, so overall i'm pretty pleased with it so if you have any questions post them down below and let me know i'll be glad to ask them if not y'all stay safe and keep on fishing folks